Right, so we are back in Farming Simulator. Uh, we have this field, 68% done. I think it's about uh, like a percent a minute or something like that. It was um, That's kind of what it was last time. In about 30 minutes, I did about 30%. Um, so hopefully we'll get this field done today. Now, before we get started on today's topic, I do want to quickly say something. Uh, I'm not sure what the future of this series or of any of the stuff I'm doing is going to be. I'm going to college soon. Um, now, I would like to keep this going, but I don't know what the situation is. It's going to be like with dorms and stuff. Um, when will I get chances to record and things like that? When will I get enough time to record? So on. So my hope is to keep this going as long as I can. Um, but I make no promises about the future of this channel or about my main channel. Uh, I just don't know. With the main channel, I may still be able to do some stuff, maybe some smaller stuff, maybe written stuff if I have to, I don't know, but um, if it comes down to it, if I'm only able to do one or the other for some reason, this channel won't really be a priority. Now, that doesn't mean I'm ending the channel. Um, even if I have to stop making videos on this channel, which I'll be really annoyed if I do, but even if that is the case, I won't be ending the channel. I've seen that happen you know, with other YouTubers where it's like, I'm going off to college, so time to delete everything. At, at the absolute most, unless something changes, the absolute most will be a hiatus, in which case I will be basically saying, well, I don't have time to do this, so um, I'm going to wait until I do have time and then I'm going to start back up again. So if you're wondering, you know, what's the, you know, this might be my last video for a while, I may get another one done yet, I don't know. But if you're wondering about it, if you're like coming from the future and I haven't uploaded in like f 15 months or something like that, um, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. Um, the, uh, if I do decide to permanently end this channel, even then I might delete it, but if I do delete it, maybe, well, if I delete it, then it'll be gone. But uh, even if I decide to permanently end this channel, I won't just disappear, I will make a post about it and say, look, here's what's happening, here's why I'm leaving, either in a video or something written, I'm not sure yet, but I have no plans to do that. So, like I say, if you're coming here from the future and I haven't uploaded it in a good while and there's no explanation as to why, which I'll probably do an explanation anyway, even if it's just a hiatus, but if there's no explanation as to why, um, I'm just busy, I am coming back, I'm not going. And I'm not going to be, like, completely offline either, if you want to message me or ask me something or whatever you want to see more from me there's always my other socials my other youtube channel my tiktok instagram whatever probably won't be as active on them um on all of them either but i i mean with uh ooh, kind of hard here with uh instagram it'll be a lot easier because mo there i mostly post like memes and pictures and stuff so um that will probably still be fairly active on but um yeah so i'm not going anywhere hopefully um permanently so, yeah, I just wanted to say that this might be the last video or one of the last videos I make for a while. Um, but I have no intentions of leaving permanently. So if you're wondering about that, then there you go. I'm not going anywhere permanently. Um, and if you are, you know, if maybe you're new here and you're like, oh, well, I want to see more from you. There's all the other videos I've done. I've done like 30 something Minecraft videos. There's like, there's at least 15 hours in that series. Well, I say 15. Um... What would it be? I guess maybe 10 hours in that series. This is episode 11, uh, and it's half-hour series, so there's at least five and a half hours in this series as well. So you have enough content on this channel already to keep you going for a little while. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to say that. Now, the main thing... Oh, bother going across here again. I'll just go up and down. The main thing I wanted to talk about today, it wasn't the future of this channel, but it's sort of something related to this channel, and that is how should Christians interact with media? I should we watch certain types of films and TV shows? Should we read certain types of books? And more relevantly to um, this particular channel, should we play either certain types of video games or even video games in general? So I think we'll start with the video games one because um, obviously that's the, the big one that I think most people would have sort of an opinion about, or at least uh, you get you know, people talk about that more. It's uh, I've heard sermons on why video games are evil or whatever, but I haven't really heard that about books and stuff. So we'll start with that. I think the the main pushback against video games is twofold. Number one, it's because they're new. So people, you know, still, you know, it's the same thing that happened with radio 
It's like, oh, what's this? This is scary. And then with television and then with like, you know, it's everything. Every new technology has that kind of phase and it is still relatively new. It mightn't feel like it for us because like, or people who are my age because we kind of grew up with them. But there are people who grew up and they never even heard of a video game. And then, you know, a few years later, they look like this and even better. Um, and quite realistic in a lot of cases. So it can be kind of scary. So I get that. So I get that's why I think that's a big reason why people are so focused on video games in particular. Another obvious reason is you're literally in the driver's seat like I am now. You're the one making these decisions. There have been other forms of media that have done things like this. Like I think in the um, 80s and 90s there were sort of choose your own adventure books where it was something like does the character do A or B? If A turned the page blah blah blah. If B turned the page blah blah blah. And you could kind of determine the outcome of the story. Similar to what the old Telltale games um, were like. Um, so this isn't, you know, th this sort of thing has happened in the past, uh, with other forms of media, but, you know, obviously, I mean, to a lot of you, the fact that that ever happened is probably going to be a surprise, which shows just how, you know, how much staying power those forms of media had. So, um, this is kind of the, the first thing that's like this, where you decide the story you were as involved as you were, that's had this staying power. And as well as that, you're more involved because in those books, it was like, um, it was all predetermined actions. Um, and it still is in video games, obviously, but there are, is more freedom in video games, depending on the game. There are some games where it's more like that, like the old Telltale games, where your actions don't really matter. They affect, the way I've heard it described, they affect the story and not the plot. So the plot points remain the same, but the individual minutia of the story can be changed. Um, so, but, but there's other games then like Detroit Become Human where the choices you make can have massive impacts on the story. Or other games like Red Dead Redemption where they, um, you know, they have little changes overall like in cutscenes and things like that. But it's, you know, it doesn't really even affect the story that much. It's just little changes here or there. But there are, there are still elements of the game that you can, enti uh, can entirely control. Like for example in Red Dead Redemption, between missions you can go and do whatever you like. If you read a book... You can't stop halfway through a chapter and just go around the world of that book. But if you're playing a video game, well, an open world video game like the Rockstar games, you can stop between missions and go and just start doing your own thing. You can kill people if you like, you can do whatever you like, so on and so forth. So, um, that's a lot more freedom than we've ever had before in any form of media. So that's why people are scared of it. So I think it's important to address, can we play these games? So, can we? Well, I, I run a gaming channel, so yeah, obviously. But there has to be a certain criteria met in games for us to play, I believe. I think that um, there, there are games that would be sinful for us to play. So what uh, would the criteria be? Well, first of all, does it promote sin? So this game is Farming Simulator. This is a simulation of farming. It's literally a game that promotes working hard um, in order to get you know, the reward. It's so, you know, you have to put the effort in, you have to put the work in, there's no shortcuts. If you want to plow a field, you have to go in and plow it. Or you can pay someone else to plow it. But that will still take time and it will take money and they'll probably make mistakes which you'll have to fix because the AI isn't great. That's not so much a feature as something that they haven't worked on fully yet. Which The AI gets better every game which is good. So this is a game that literally promotes hard work. Now, it's not overly realistic obviously. I mean, I could become, like give me a week in this game, like a, a, a real life week. Give me a, a real life week in this game and if I really try and I really think it through... I can just become a millionaire very easily. Um, but obviously that's not how it works in real life. So it's not too realistic. Some elements of realism have been sacrificed for the gameplay, which is a good thing. I'm not complaining. I I'd rather be fun and, you know, have to suspend disbelief a little bit rather than be overly realistic and me be like, well, at this stage, why not just get an actual job as a farmer if I'm going to be doing all this stuff, you know? So, um, so th there's, th there's a lot of good to this game and there's like nothing really that's bad about it outside of personal preference. The only real complaints you could make about this game at this stage would be personal preference. Oh, I don't like farming, so why would I play Farming Simulator? Uh, or, you know, whatever. So it's like, well, it it's not a problem with the game, it's just a thing of the game offers something you don't want. Uh, for some people that makes it a bad game, but for reasonable people it's just like, oh, okay, fair enough. Um, or something like Minecraft, where it's like you can go out and survive and kill. Well, that, expl that promotes creativity, adventure, that sort of a thing. Some people will get upset and say, no, you should go out and have real adventures. To which I'd say, fella, in this economy, I'm, ha I'm just happy I can go out and eat real food. <laughs> like, let, let, let's not talk about real adventures. Like, come on. <laughs> 
well, I'm not going to go out and slay a dragon in real life. I might go out and stub my toe. <laughs> but, like, I'm not going to have real adventures in real life. Let's just be realistic. That's a criticism I've heard, and it's just kind of silly. Um, but, so there, there's these games like this, or like Candy Crush, or something like that, where it's like, even if it doesn't necessarily promote something good, there's nothing wrong with it. It's still a bit of fun, and the main problem you could have, really, is preference. Then there's other games that include violence. And for some people, violence is an, an immediate no. We, we don't like violence, we, we, you know, whatever. Well... I don't think that's a good criteria. You see, I mean, there's plenty of violence in the Bible. There's a story, like in Genesis, about a woman being raped, and then her brothers go and slaughter, I think it's an entire city, in, in revenge. Right? That's a very, very violent story. So what's the difference? Well, the difference is promotion and simply showing. Does the game promote violence? Or does it simply show violence? Is violence an element of the world that you have to deal with and in some cases have to engage in in order to survive, in order to show the reality of the world? Or is violence something that the game wants you to basically see as a good thing, something that it promotes? So violence being a necessary element of a game doesn't necessarily make it bad because it uh, could be just showing this is a messed up world where you have to do messed up things. We don't like that you have to do messed up things but that's you know the way it is. It's basically, just because you have to do the violence doesn't mean it's glorifying violence. It's just a way of showing this world is messed up. So let's take a game like Red Dead Redemption. Does that show violence or does that glorify violence? Well, you have to use violence a lot in that game. But all the people who end up using violence and end up sticking to violence, they suffer consequences because of it. Um, Arthur Morgan, spoilers by the way, uh, Arthur Morgan in the second game, he lives the violent life of the outlaw, his whole redemption arc, you know he has a redemption arc, but that redemption arc still includes violence, he still goes about it in the violent way, and because of that, he suffers the consequences of the violent lifestyle. Um, John Marston, he solves his, all of his problems, even throughout his redemption arc, with violence, and um, because he, you know, he lived the violent life and he used violence to solve his problems, even throughout his redemption arc, he ends up paying the consequences and dying. So even though there's that redemption arc, they still have to, if you will, pay for their sins because they still use violence in all aspects. Then we have another game like GTA. GTA is a game I played and I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm not sure if, because I, I, like I'm playing Red Dead again, I'm not sure if I'll play GTA again because I don't think it simply depicts all these things. I think it flat out uh, glorifies them because there is, there is the possibility for the main characters to suffer the consequences of their violence. There's obviously the ending where you can choose one of three endings. So there is that possibility for them to, um, for at least two, one of the three of them, um, to suffer the consequences of their violence. But at the same time, they use violence, like the main, it's, it's complicated. If you know the ending, then you know it. It's sort of complicated. I don't think I'll play that game again because that seems not necessarily to promote violence but I don't think it condemns violence, it seems kind of fine with violence, um, with like sinful violence and stuff so um, I'm on the fence about GTA, some of you will think oh you can take a hooker into a back alley and kill her so that well I mean you can if you, if you want to but you don't have to, there's no part of the game where that's a mission, that's just like I mean the options there but like in this game, I have the option to ram my tractor into a tree. That doesn't mean it's promoting dangerous driving, you know what I mean? So, when it comes to video games, I'm still on the fence about that. Some of you might think that's ridiculous. Some might say, well, of course we shouldn't play it, or, well, maybe, you know, well, of course it's fine, whatever. It's something I need to give a bit more thought to. So, I, I, I think I will be avoiding it, though, um, unless I can be convinced that it's not uh, violent, or that it's, it's not sinful. Uh, I think for the time being, I will be avoiding it just as a matter of conscience. Uh, if you have your reasons for thinking it's fine, then you know leave them in the comments. Uh, and of course, if you disagree with me, you can always leave it in the comments. Just be respectful. <laughs> that's the bare minimum, but I do have to ask for it, unfortunately. Um, another problem with video games that people often bring up is the thing of addiction. Basically, what if you get addicted to video games? This is really the best argument I've heard against playing video games in general, but it's also a poor argument because it's not an argument against video games, it's an argument against addiction. So it's like, oh well, someone will spend 15 hours a day in their room not talking to anyone and playing video games. So it's like, well yeah, that's a problem, 
the problem isn't the video game, the problem is that person's behavior. The problem is that person's decisions. The fact that they're simply playing a game isn't wrong. What's wrong is the fact that they're wasting their life on something. If you play it for a bit every now and again just as a hobby, there's nothing wrong with that. But of course, if you get addicted and waste your life playing it, that's a massive problem. But again, that's not an argument against video games. That's an argument against addiction. So if you're not addicted to them, you should be fine. Um, and that's really one of the biggest arguments I've seen is that people will say, oh, well, people spend all their time alone in their room playing video games. It's like, well, yeah, some people do. But that's not the general experience of video games. That's not the um, blanket experience of video games that everybody has. Some people have much better, much more positive experiences with video games. So I think that the addiction argument is good um, in cases where someone has an addiction uh, to a video game. But in the, as a general argument against video games, I don't think it's a good argument. I don't think it holds up because it can really be applied to anything. What if someone spends 15 hours a day inside in their room reading books and never talking to anyone? That can be just as damaging, depending on the books, of course. But that almost seems nobler because, well, it's a book and not a video game. Um, and people will say, well, reading books has, you know, it has advantages. Oh, so does playing video games. It can be distressful, it can be uh, de-stressful, as I said, it can, you know, de-stress you, it can help with hand-eye coordination. There's a few advantages to playing video games. And there's advantages to reading books. So if you're going to use the addiction argument, I think you have to use it in a situation where you're dealing with someone who is actually addicted rather than just as a blanket statement against video games. Because again, the problem in that case is not video games, the problem is addiction. Now, moving on to other forms of media, what about films? Well, I think the same basically goes. Um, don't waste your life just watching films. I mean, if you're a film critic and it's your job, then go for it. But don't waste your life, your life just watching films. And also use that criteria of does it show violence or does it promote violence if there's violence in it? Does it show it or does it glorify it? Does it depict it or does it glorify it? If it depicts it, fine. If it glorifies it, not so fine. Um, and maybe don't, you know, there's some stuff that you shouldn't watch that's just crap. Uh, there's this new thing, uh, you know, the, the, this brain rot, you know, that, that children are always watching. If it's Skibbity Toilet or Ohio Riz Sigma, whatever that, you know, that nonsense. It's like, if it's something that'll rot your brain, <laughs> something stupid like that, then also don't watch it. I don't necessarily think it's a sin. It is a massive waste of time and you shouldn't be doing it just for your own sake. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, and of course, there's that thing of, you know, films, they're not as interactive as video games. You can't really interact with a film at all. Um, but still, I think there's that criteria that, that has to be met of, does this promote and glorify a sinful lifestyle or does this depict a sinful world in which people do sinful things to survive? Um, and if it, match, if it meets the criteria then I say it's fine. As well as that there's also uh, books and people are very you know picky about the type of books you read, the type of genre, that sort of a thing. Um, I mostly read theology books but I do like other types of books I just you know I if I'm going to read something, I want to read theology, personally. That's just a personal preference. I have read other things. I read... Um, I started reading Game of Thrones, but there was a particular scene that made me very uncomfortable, so I decided to stop reading. Um, that seemed to glorify elements that I was not a big fan of. I won't go into detail, but it, it wasn't great, so I stopped reading. Uh, but I've also read... You know, I've read the Harry Potter series, which I liked. I've read... Um, books about Irish folklore and I want to read more books about Irish folklore and Irish legend that sort of thing because I find that stuff very interesting so I'd very much like to um, read up on all of that but I have read other types of things but personally I just choose to mostly read theology books because I just find that sort of thing helpful I enjoy it um, and that's also a big thing like I do enjoy it I enjoy reading theology depends on the book of course um, if I don't enjoy a book even if it's really short I find it a slog to get through but if I do enjoy a book, I find it, you know, it's great for me to get through. So, um, there's that as well. There's the enjoyment factor. But I don't think you have to just read theology. I think some people act like, oh, you have to only read theology. Well, there's virtue in reading other types of books. And I don't just mean other non-fiction like psychology or history or whatever. 
novels are fine. Like I said, I enjoy reading novels. I like novels. We're 92% complete, so we should get this field done today. So I enjoy reading um, novels. I know there's you know people who think, oh, you shouldn't read horror, you shouldn't read thriller. I kind of think that's silly, to be honest. My biggest gripe with horror at the minute isn't the horror genre as a genre. It's just the fact that most of it is just cheap nonsense that's made to make money. And there's very clearly like no passion put into the projects. And that's mostly with films. So my, my biggest gripe against horror at the moment is the fact that the people making it just don't seem to care. Um, it's not about the, the fact that it is horror. So you want to read horror, you want to read thriller. Go for it. There's no problem with that. We have to remember, if we're Christians, we're indwelt with the Holy Spirit. All right? The Holy Spirit is God. He's not threatened by the things we read in horror books. So I like, again, if the book is promoting a sinful lifestyle, then yeah, maybe give it a pass. But just general horror stuff is, you know, it's not that bad. Um, I mean, I have a friend who was telling me that the people in their church were actually being quite nasty, quite horrible to them because they read like thriller and stuff. And this this person who loves reading, and because they read thriller, basically the people in the church wouldn't be friends with them, which I think is just utterly ridiculous. Uh, it's, it's stupid and childish. Like I get it, if you yourself don't want to read thriller, if you yourself have no interest in it, that's fine. But the idea that like, oh well, you know, you you read it, so I, you know, I'm going to be horrible to you. That's that's just flat out not Christian. Um, so, and as well as that, that's important. Is we need to be mindful of the way other people consume media. Now, if we feel that the other per that the way someone else is consuming media is sinful, then I think it's you know, if we have that level of level of trust and relationship with them, I think it's fine to go up to them and talk about it with them. And, Hear them out, hear why they do it, see what their reason is. If their reason is, look, I've given it a lot of thought and I genuinely believe that this sort of thing is not sinful, well, then that's something. Now, if their reason is, look, I, I, I'm sure it's fine, I don't care, I'll read this book or I'll play this video game where I, you know, it promotes all sorts of sin and whatever, I'll, you know, I'll do this and that, it doesn't matter, I don't care. There's a big attitude problem there that has to be dealt with. But if someone says, look, I've given it a lot of thought, I know what criteria I'm using. I'm, you know, I'm making sure I'm not doing anything sinful. I do care about honoring God. I do care about all that, um, and I'm making sure that I don't dishonor God through the things that I read. And I genuinely don't believe that the things I'm reading or watching or playing are sinful. Now, you can still disagree with that person, but you have to respect the fact that at least they have given a thought and they do clearly care. And if it's a big enough issue for you, of course, you continue to talk about it with them and hear them out and accept. Maybe they're wrong, maybe you're wrong, it's always a possibility. And listen to them, and that's the big thing, is listen to them, because if they're not being listened to, they're not going to talk to you. Or they're, at the very least, they're not going to listen to you. So that's a big part of communication as well, which I feel is very important, and it's something that keeps being forgotten, that we have to be respectful to each other. So, and we have to listen to each other. So, hear them out, hear their reason, and who knows, maybe you yourself will be uh, convinced. Or even if you don't think it's sinful, to read something like if you personally decide oh, well I have no interest in thriller but I don't think it's sinful don't belittle people for it it's just childish it's like playground bullying it's just childish don't belittle people because they read a type of genre that you're not a fan of like I personally wouldn't read anything to do with sports I have no interest in sports at all but I'm not going to belittle someone or act like they're less of a Christian because they decide to read a lot of sports stuff because I think that's just a silly way of going about things um, I doubt they'll convince me to read sports stuff, but that doesn't mean I have to belittle them over it. Um, and as well as that, I think it's important to talk about the effect that this media has on you. The, the media you consume can very much have a big effect on you, but again, I think some people take it to a ridiculous extreme. Like, um, for example, a friend of mine had to kill a nest of wasps, and they were afraid to do it. And someone said that the reason they were afraid to kill a nest of wasps is because they read Triller. Not because it was, you know, a nest of wasps, but because they, they read, which I mean, I, I've, that's stupid. That's genuinely one of the stupidest things I've ever heard in my life. I'm terrified of wasps and I always have been, even before I ever read a book, I've been terrified. That's, it's common sense to be scared of a wasp's nest. Even if you're not scared of wasps, you should be scared of a wasp's nest. And if you're not, I don't know what to say to you because, like, what? 
All right, like, but that's the sort of silliness we see. It's like, oh, well, the reason that you're afraid of these violent, stabby, flying insects that, you know, could swarm you very easily in the course of what you're doing, the reason you're afraid of them isn't because, oh, we're finished. Okay. The reason you're afraid of them isn't because, you know, of what they are. It's because of the books you read. Uh, that, that, that makes sense. Might as well finish the contract. So, um, oh, wow, okay. And collect. Wow. See, now, no hassle, no nothing. We're done. We got it done. That's good. Now, what else will we do? Uh, we could do some more plowing, I guess. Plow field 16 or 29. Um, whew. where do we pick our stuff up from again we pick it up from about here somewhere around here uh, I'll look for new contracts maybe some like uh, new contracts what do we get clear contracts new contracts we could do some sewing, why not? Uh, borrow items, we don't really have time to get this done, um, but we can hopefully get it started. So, yeah, I'll do a lot of this off camera again, and then we can, um, I just realized, well, we can finish it next time, I just realized I have to buy the bloody seed, don't I? Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, I hate the sewing missions because they don't give, even if you ask to, like, borrow an item, they don't ever give you the seed. So I have to spend my own money on seed now. Do I? Yep. Okay, give me a sec. Uh, big pallets. Uh, I'll just buy, that's fertilizer. I'll just buy one bag of seed. I'll probably need more, but I'll buy one now. I don't suppose I can rent it. Um, where is it? There it is. And, of course, I'm not close enough where I am to fill it up. Great. You first need to fill the tool, says the thing at the bottom of the controls. Thanks for that, man. I didn't know. Okay, refill the seed. Got the seeder. How much will this give us now? A thousand. That'll be enough, I'm sure. Definitely. Anyway. Um, so yeah, the media you consume can absolutely um, affect you in different ways. For example, if you watch a lot of horror stuff, like I did, used to, and do again now, um, is this the same field we just done? I think it is. Oh wow, cool. Anyway, if you watch a lot of horror stuff, you can become paranoid, like I was when I was younger. Now, I'm very bit older now and more able to handle that stuff. But there was a time when I was too young to be watching that stuff and it made me very paranoid. Um, or if you're watching stuff with a lot of violence, it can make you maybe a bit more angry or violent or whatever. Um, or if you read more theology books, it can really help you in your walk. I found that a lot, that it's been really, really helpful to me. Um, what am I meant to be planting here? Hold on, before I just start. What am I planting? Um, oh, I was about to start just with a random thing. Okay, we're doing oats. <laughs> I'm glad I checked that. But yeah, so it, absolutely, the, the media you consume can absolutely affect you in a, a lot of different ways. Will I need the thingy? Yes, I will. Put it out. Um, it will absolutely affect you, so you've got to be careful of the stuff you read. It's not doing anything, what? Oh, come on. Okay, hopefully it's going to be doing something now, but you got to be careful of the stuff you read. you got to make sure you're reading stuff that's decent um but it won't affect you so much that you'll just like you'll go from somehow being not afraid of wasps to now being afraid of wasps or something silly like that it won't affect you like that um maybe which i mean to be fair if you're not afraid of wasps it's about time you become afraid of wasps if you ask me so uh, <laughs> um how much are we getting for this job 5,000, okay, so I'll be able to make back the money I lost on the seed. That's good. Uh, so, yeah, we, we can't pretend that the stuff you watch doesn't affect you, but it, it won't affect you to that much of a point that it fundamentally changes who you are. Unless, of course, you're unsaved, you read something theology, there's the gospel there, and God decides to save you. But that's a really good thing that happens, so we won't complain about that. 
Um, but yeah, so just be aware of all those things. Be aware of, am I dishonoring God by consuming this media? How is it changing me or is it changing me? What's going on with that? That sort of a thing. So uh, you have to be aware of that. And uh, speaking of being aware of things, can I put this up on both sides? No. Okay. I'm going to have to be careful with drilling that now because I don't have that little line on that side. Um, but yeah, so just be aware of how does it affect me? Does it honour or dishonour God? That sort of a thing. And really just use a lot of common sense and you should hopefully be fine. But yeah. That's basically it for from me today. Um, if there's anything else you'd like to see me tackle, any other topics or anything like that, please do be sure to let me know. I'm always very interested in hearing your suggestions. I think I'll do this side now first, um, just while I'm here, and I can put the thing down. Yeah, if there's any topics you'd like to see me discuss, uh, please do let me know. If there's any topic I have discussed that you think I was wrong on, um, well, I'm never wrong. That's the great thing about being me, is I'm never wrong. But, look, if you're delusional enough to think that I was somehow wrong, I mean, keep it to yourself. I'm joking, obviously. No, absolutely, you can comment down, you can say, hey, listen, moron. Well, maybe not like that. But just, you know, be respectful, be kind, and all things, be Christ-like. And let me know, because if I'm wrong, I want to know, so that I can change my mind. But if you're disrespectful, if you act like a gish, if you're not Christian, about it, if you act in a non-Christian way about it, well then I'm not going to respond to you. So, just a little warning there. Please just do the bare minimum. Speaking of bare minimum, is it even leaving a thing for me? Just about, I think. It better be. <laughs> okay. I can barely see that. Sure, look, it'll be grand. I'll finish this line here and then that'll be it. Oh, we're 10% done already. Okay. I was going to say I'll do a bit of this off camera, or maybe I did say that, so I don't remember, but I don't think I'll have to do this off camera. I think I can probably leave this here till next time and then finish this in the next video. Which is good. By the way, I'm sorry for all the commentary. For anybody who comes here just to hear me talk about the topics and you're not interested in the commentary, sorry, but I am still playing a game, so I'm still going to talk about these things. If you want to just hear me talk about stuff, you can listen to my sermons over on the main channel where I go verse by verse through verses of scripture. Um, at the moment doing Genesis, hopefully going through the entire Bible, depending on time, of course. Like I said, I don't know what time is going to be like for me. I don't know how much time I'm going to have, so we'll see. Anyway, I think that's it for me today, uh, from me today. Thank you guys for watching. Goodbye, and God bless.